All right, in this video, I wanna talk about one more, I don't know, aspect, I guess, of the least squared residual line, one last topic for 7.2, and then maybe a quick recap of all the things that we've done so far, because uh, there's kind of a lot of loose pieces out there, and I wanna be really clear about what kind of the expectations are in this class. So anyways, you might recall um, that when, after we entered data into lists, and the data that I'm using in this example was made up data on temperature and hot chocolate sales at some kid's hot chocolate stand. After you enter that data into a list, we could go to stat and then calc and then linreg ax plus b. This is the only calculator function that we've used so far in this section um, is this linreg ax plus b. You tell it where your explanatory variable and where your response variable is. And then you go down to calculate and it gives you this output. We've seen this output a few times. We've talked about the A, the B, and the R in this output so far. And so maybe notably, something that it gives us that we haven't talked about is this R squared. And that's gonna be the topic of this video. So as a reminder, the A and the B, those are the coefficients of your LSR line. I'll talk more about those in a second. And R, that actually goes all the way back to 7.1. That's called the correlation coefficient. And uh, that's a measure that goes from negative one to positive one and it tells you whether the correlation is negative, like it is in this case, or positive, meaning as you look at the observations from left to right, they tend to go up. And then it also tells you how strong that correlation is. So that gave us kind of this little scale here, where this thing ranges from negative one to positive one, and the closer it is to negative one or positive one, the stronger the correlation is. And if it's positive, positive correlation, if it's negative, negative correlation. At any rate, if you take that value of R, that correlation coefficient, and you square it, meaning multiply it by itself, negative 0.9025 times negative 0.9025. Well, you get a positive number first of all, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So R squared is always gonna be a positive number. Uh, in this case, it'd be like 0.8146, give or take. Uh, that thing has a name, and that thing has an interpretation, and that's what I wanna get into in this video. So R squared is called the coefficient of determination. And in this example, R squared was approximately equal to uh, 0.8146. If I round it to four decimal places. Uh, and so what you should expect me to ask you to do is first calculate the coefficient of determination. So it's not too hard to calculate it. You just go into this single output screen that we have and you pull that number off the list. I guess the hardest part would be understanding that this one is called the coefficient of determination whereas R is called the correlation coefficient. It'd be really easy to confuse those two. Uh, but R squared, because it's R squared, it's gonna range from zero to one. And if you think about where the number comes from, if our value of R is close to negative one or close to positive one, when we square it, we're gonna end up with a number relatively close to positive one. And if our value of R is closer to zero, whether it's negative or positive doesn't really matter because I'm gonna square it and that'll make it positive. If we square a number that's close to zero, we're gonna end up with something that's close to zero. So you can kind of think about R squared as a measure of goodness of fit. Uh, R squared kind of tells you how well, informally speaking, exactly what it tells you is how well the line fits the data. All right, so in this picture, when I drew this line, the line fits the data pretty well, right? It tends to kind of go pretty close to most of the points. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. So therefore, I'd expect a value of R squared fairly close to one. And if the dots, if the line didn't fit the dots very well at all, I'd expect a value of R squared not very close to one, in other words, closer to zero. So informally, that's the interpretation, but I wanna give you a bit more formal of an interpretation before we call this good. And the more formal interpretation, the logic is if we go back to our data, if you consider sales here, so if you consider this just as a single variable, go all the way back to the first chapter in our class where we talked about a single variable, we talked about the mean of this variable, we talked about the median, we could talk about the standard deviation, we could talk about the interquartile range, we could talk about a lot of different aspects of this single variable. So we talk about the average number of sales you have, and if you just look at these values, I don't know, maybe the average is somewhere in like the 80s or so, give or take, I don't know exactly what it is, but it wasn't 80 on all days, right? It's not the same every day. In fact, it's quite a bit different. On some days it's really high and on some days it's really low. There's a lot of variance associated with this variable sales. 
And that makes sense because there's lots of things that's going to cause your sales to change, right? Uh, I don't know if it's a hot day, apparently that matters, but maybe other aspects. Is it really windy out? Is it a school day? Is there a lot of traffic? Is there, you know, you can come up with a big list of things that might affect sales at some kid's hot chocolate stand. There's a lot of things that affect the sales, which is why these values vary so much. One of the things that affects sales is temperature. Right? We know that temperature affects sales because we can see that relationship in our scatter plot here. That's exactly what our LSR line is telling us is how much temperature affects sales. So there's a lot of different things that affect sales. One of those things is temperature. Temperature accounts for a lot of the variance in sales. How much? R squared as a percentage. R squared is the percentage of the variance in Y that's attributable to X. Let me write that. Your coefficient of determination tells you the percentage of the variance in Y that's attributable to X. So in this example, think about it like there's a lot of variance in sales, right? As we saw by looking at the data earlier, and we can kind of allocate that variance to different factors, right? Maybe it's windy out and that's going to cause more people to buy this hot chocolate. Maybe it's cold out and that's going to cause more people to buy this hot chocolate. I don't know. Lots of different factors. 81% of that variance is attributable to the temperature. So 19% is attributable to other causes, 81% is attributable to temperature. And that's exactly what the coefficient of determination tells you. The percentage of the variance in Y, in this case sales, that is attributable to X, in this case temperature. So if R squared is really, really close to one, then almost all of the variance in Y is attributable to X. Because if R squared was like 0.99, then we're saying 99% of the variance in Y is attributable to X. But if R squared is really small, like point, I don't know, 0.15, then we're saying that only 15% of the variance in Y is attributable to X. So other factors need to be taken into account. So when you look up at your data, if you look at our scatter plot here, if most of the variance in Y is attributable to X, if most of the differences in the heights of these dots is explained by how far left and right these dots are, then my line is going to fit the data really well. And if most of the difference in the heights of these dots is not explained by how far left and right they are, well, then my line won't fit the data very well. And so that's what R squared tells you. You're, I'd like you to know the name of R squared, the coefficient of determination, and what it means. And what it means, I mean, informally, it's a, goodness, a measure of goodness of fit. But a little bit more formally, the answer I would like you to give me is it tells you the percentage of the variance in, and then tell me whatever your Y variable is, whatever your response variable is, that's attributable to X, the explanatory variable. And that's it. And that's the last kind of major topic that we have about LSR lines. There's one more section in your book where we learn some theoretical stuff, which is good to be able to know. Uh, but I think this is a good point for me to go through and give you a big list of what I want you to be able to do in chapter seven so far. And so a typical problem will follow all of these steps. Maybe I just go through them one by one. First thing, identify the explanatory and response variables, right? In every single problem, you're going to have two different variables. In this case, those two variables are temperature and sales. And one of those two things will be the explanatory variable. The other one will be the response variable. Think cause and effect. First question I typically ask is for you to identify the explanatory and response variables. Second thing is to calculate the LSR line. So remember that's the y equals ax plus b where a and b are values that come straight out of your calculator out of win reg ax plus b. Calculate the LSR line, tell me what a and b are, and then interpret those coefficients in the context of the example. So a tells you in this example that for every one degree increase in temperature, I'm gonna sell one and a half less cups of hot chocolate, and B tells you how many cups of hot chocolate you'd expect to sell, 167.5 in this case, if it were zero degrees out. The third thing, which you actually learned second, you learned before number two up here, uh, but I want to ask them in this order because when I want you to, when I have you sketch a scatter plot, I want you to include the LSR line on your scatter plot. And in order to include the LSR line on your scatter plot, you have to have already calculated that LSR line. So the scatter plot, even though you learned it earlier, will typically be asked as the third question on a test. Sketch a scatter plot. Make sure that you can make those out of your calculator. That's under the stat plot menu. And make sure you can include your LSR line. Type it into the Y equals screen. Come up with something that looks like what we made above. Fourth thing. There's really two parts to the fourth thing. I want you to be able to calculate and interpret each of the following. The correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination. So the first thing is just to understand these are like these fancy statistical 
jargon phrases, uh, understand what these mean. The correlation coefficient is always R, and the coefficient of determination is always R squared, but don't expect me to tell you that this is R. Make sure that you understand that this is R. And these both come straight out of the same Linreg AX plus B screen. So here's R and R squared. But in addition to calculating them, which most people can do, you have to be able to interpret them. So R in this case would tell me that I have strong negative correlation, and R squared in this case would tell me that 81% of the variance in sales is attributable to temperature. And then the fifth and final thing, two things on this one as well. These were the two kind of applications of the LSR line. We made this LSR line, what are you gonna do with it? Well, there's a few things you can do with it. There's lots of things you can do with it actually. Uh, but two that we focus on here is you can make predictions with it. Okay, if it's gonna be 50 degrees tomorrow, how many cups of hot chocolate do I expect to sell? And then also to calculate residuals, which remember is just how far above or below the line a given observation is. Every observation has its own residual and expect me to ask you to calculate one. And if you can do these five things, you'll do great on the question that looks that's out of this section on your final exam. Uh, there's a little bit more with LSR lines, but it's more on the theoretical side, so it typically shows up more as true-false questions, little things to know, and that's what we'll get into in 7.3.